So now we're going to install the uh, 47605 DP, uh, the dual AC power and surge protection module. For this one, um, you'll see that it's, it's quite a bit bigger than your typical small uh, junction box. It, is, it takes up the full size outlet on the bottom. It includes the J box for it. So we're gonna have to knock out a knockout on the bottom of this to bring our power cord into. And then we'll have to knock out the bottom, the full section of the bottom of the SMC to install. Just like that. And we get our set of pliers and, and twist this this way to break it off. Now we have the full size knockout here. Next, we're gonna bring our Romex cable in. And before we can do that, we have to knock this guy out. So we'll brace it against something strong. Again, it has this one little piece where there's material, the rest of it's open. So we'll just get it braced and just push it out. Get our cable clamp, saw the cable clamp. Let the screws face towards the front. You can put this device either way. I'm gonna choose the front with the logo so I remember where I'm doing it. But the, we'll drop it in the hole. Bring in our Romex cable. Push it up through the opening. There we go. Good. Now I'll get the screws from the screw kit included with the product. There are four screws here. And the way this system goes together is once you you make these connections, you put the piece down in there, and the screws go through both and into the metal box. You need to get some stripping tools and cut this uh, Romex cable open. Now, this is a dual outlet. We're gonna need to, uh, to connect them both. So I'm gonna cut off a little bit extra of this, of this power cable, to use to, to jumper between the two devices to expose the internal conductors, get rid of the outer jacket, and should leave you with one black, one white neutral, one bare copper. We'll make the connections on the first, the first outlet. There's a stripping guide on the back here, right here, that little box right there. We're gonna strip off half inch of cable jacket. Double check that that's right, there we go. We don't wanna to go too long here. If it's too long, the copper's sticking out, but you definitely don't want to go too short. If you go too short, you won't reach in far enough to make a contact. So check your strip guide there. That's a little bit long. I think I'll take off a little piece of that. That looks good. <clears throat> so there's silver side and there's a brass side. The silver side is for the neutral, the white. The brass side is for the, the hot, the black and the ground goes to this green screw here. We'll set the ground aside for right now, our black or hot. So you'll notice on these products that there's a load side and a line side. You wanna use the line side. So we're gonna go in, push, push the cable in there, Phillips screwdriver out on the line side, tighten the screw. Before we walk away, we'll tighten this one up too, just so it doesn't rattle. Okay, that's one side. We'll take the, the other one, the neutral. We'll do the same thing on the neutral side. It doesn't matter which of these holes you use. If you're putting in two cables, which we will be in a minute, you'll use both holes. Tighten up the other screw, just keep from rattling. Now we're gonna do the, the ground. Before you can do the ground, because you're, you're doing a, um, a screw termination instead of a clamp, you need to put a bend in this cable. This conductor here needs to have a hook in it. The hook needs to be set up so they can go around the, around the device clockwise. You're going to come out the side. You'll see there's a small slot there for the cable to come out. So go get this guy around the screw. tighten the screw down. So that's one of them wired up. What we're going to do is we're going to wire this one to this one. 
We're gonna go into the, to the line side on this one, and then we're gonna bring our cable circuit in also to this one, and that will jumper the two together, okay? So I'll measure this thing out. We wanna keep it pretty tight. We don't want a big wad of cable in there. So we're gonna use about so much cable. Good. Same thing here. We're going to the same set of holes here. That's good. Let's strip this off again to the same strip length as before. This is 14 gauge cable. Use the 14 gauge hole in your wire stripper. There we go. We're gonna go into the first hole here to leave the second hole open for our electrical cable coming in from below. So hot wire to line. Good. And the white wire goes to the neutral side. And that looks good. Now they're not gonna stay because we don't we haven't tightened up the screws we have our measurements done. This last one is a bit more difficult because what we're gonna to need to do is put a, a loop in the cable like so, hook it around that, that screw. There, um, if you're not 100% confident in how to do this kind of work, you can call our tech support line. But what you're, uh, you also have the ability, if you want to, to remove these outlets from the uh, from the frame by taking these four screws out then the outlet will be released if it is difficult for you to get access in here sometimes it is with a little practice though you can get it secured in there i'm going to tighten that screw up it's a little bit difficult to get into it this way we're going to need to do a wire nut to make our connection for to the uh, to the circuit all right set the other side let's bring this cable in here do the same thing, strip it open, expose the cable and strip to the same strip guide as before. Okay, check with your strip guide. That black one looks a little long. The, strip guide here is. Yeah, the black one is just a tiny bit long. I'll just nip a little bit of that off. You wanna be really careful with this. So, we're going to come in here with the uh, the hot lead now, or the uh, the line the line feed from the uh, circuit breaker panel. I'm going to make sure these stay in there. We're going to bring the neutral in first, and while holding the other divide the other cable in, holding them both in, tighten up that screw. And again, we'll tighten this one up for convenience' sake, so it doesn't rattle. On the other side, same thing, hot, goes in, make sure that both cables are fully seated, drive home the screw. Check. Check everything to make sure it's tight. Our last point is to connect these to ground leads with a wire nut. So we'll connect these two with a wire nut. Get a good amount of twist on there to make sure it's seated all the way home. And it's good practice around the wire nut to keep it from whack backing off. This is not to make it watertight. It's there to secure it so it doesn't come unscrewed. Okay, we'll put it off to the side here. Now we're ready to install this into the box. Screws out of the way. Bring, bring some cable into the box. Can you see down in the box? I should pop it up. Bring some cable into the box so you've got some slack storage. Ensure that, the, that all the cables are gonna fit in there without touching. Press it in, drop it into the, into the hole, and then secure with the provided screws. So the, uh, the screws include four of these little washers. These little washers um, are there to bite through the powder coating in order to provide a good solid ground for the, for the uh, electrical enclosure itself. Get all four screws started before you're driving any of them home.
Once all four screws are started, you can go ahead and tighten them all up. To make sure that the things don't warp, go in, a, in an X pattern. Go diagonally across to the opposite side. I'm sure things go in straight. Underneath, you want to tighten that clamp. We left the screws right in front, so it's easy to do. And finally, we want to install a staple 